الذي سخر البحر لتأكلوا منه لحما طريا وتستخرجوا منه حلية تلبسونها وَتَسْتَخْرِجُوا مِنْهُ حِلْيَةً تَلْبَسُونَهَا وَتَرَى الْفُلْكَ مَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ Land and sea come together in an eternal embrace that ignites the imagination to draw a painting based on the deep need of humanity for their ongoing reproduction. History has recorded the immortal feats of men on the pages of the water. Where the waves of the sea meet the port docks, the memory embodies the link between the past and present, inspiring the wisdom of our forefathers, the seamen, as they rode the ships over the waves with hearts full of hope that the future will be better. The future is now rising, lighting up a country whose area spans over 2,000 kilometers of strategic beaches between the Arabian Gulf and the Red Sea, 1,050 nautical miles on the western coast and 520 miles on the eastern coast. The ports were unable to keep up with the requirements of development plans, causing chaos as a result of the congestion of ships between the ports, leading to their slow movement. The ships sometimes took 40 days to leave a large port such as Jeddah port, thus hindering the trade movement and inflating the prices of goods. These environmental, human, historic and realistic elements came together to stress the need for establishing a body that is specialized in managing the ports with a national identity. Thus, the Ports Authority was established, announcing itself as strong as the tides and the will of honest men through history on the first day of the holy month of Ramadan in 1396 Hijri. <laughs> At first glance, the scene seems real, complex and difficult. Over 350 ships and 1,008,000 tons of shipments await unloading. This seems frightening and boring, along with the inability to keep up with the increased imports to the kingdom since the start of the economic spurt. Moreover, multiple entities supervising the ports at the time hindered quick decision-making. All that pointed to the fact that this is not easy. However, the will and minds of the men who realized the reality prompted them to work day and night. They pledged their lives and time in a rare challenge to fulfill their national objectives and manage the marine transport system efficiently and capably. This was achieved by the authority in record time, which announced its immense abilities and unique capacities and resolved the bottleneck in record time, almost five months following its establishment. This would not have happened without sound planning, time scheduling and updating methods and equipment, which enabled it to build new ports, unify the equipment of the various ports and expand the existing ports without focusing on a single one. Four decades have passed since the establishment of the Ports Authority which led to the establishment of several main ports on the eastern and western coasts with multiple specializations, industrial and commercial, in addition to three oil ports. The Red Sea coast has six ports. Jeddah Islamic Port, Deba Port, Yanbur Commercial Port, King Fahed Industrial Port in Yanbu, Jizan Port and Falazan Port. The Arabian Gulf Coast consists of four ports, King Abdulaziz Port, Damam, Jubail Commercial Port, King Fahad Industrial Port in Jubail, and Ras Al Kair Port. The Saudi ports, 
since the early days were strategically important as the only gateway for the pilgrims and the main gateway for commerce with the Arab Peninsula, at a time when there were no other competing means of transport. However, the rug was not pulled out completely from under the port passageways with their advanced fleets of ships on marine routes. The ship gates were, moreover, not locked in the face of travellers. There are ties that still pull them to the Saudi ports, as they're still buzzing with hundreds of thousands of travellers in view of the unique comforts and services and modern outfitting, whether in the passenger halls or expedited and facilitated travel procedures. The masterminds did not stop nor did their aspiration in seeing the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia rid of its need for others and achieving prosperity for its citizens. Since the 70s, work has been underway to ensure self-sufficiency through a sound economic strategy that targeted diversifying sources of income and supporting exports. The port's authority was the magic key for achieving this aspiration. With over 60 billion riyals invested in expanding and developing Saudi ports as part of a larger strategy, focused on stimulating exports and adding value to imports. The port's authority, since its inception, was destined to bear the burdens of grave challenges that appear every once in a while, such as the quick structural economic changes in the international shipping markets, especially with the use of containers and ships prompted by the urgent need to address this quickly by establishing and developing container stations in all the Saudi ports and focusing specifically on the commercial ports. This reduced the cost of handling per tonne from 155 rials in 1976 to less than 6 rials in 1998, thus strongly supporting the economic development program of the nation by reducing the cost of imports and alleviating the inflation pressures, as well as making exports more competitive in global markets. Today, the Saudi ports make a significant net profit for the Saudi Treasury. The Jeddah Islamic port, for example, receives 65% of the total commercial containers coming into the kingdom, in addition to 60% of the total imports and 65% of the food imports coming into all the Saudi cities. When we learn that marine transport contributes 90% to world commerce, we understand the ability of marine ports in establishing economic balance in any country. Therefore, the Saudi Ports Authority worked hard to include the Saudi ports in a comprehensive contract that significantly contributes to supporting the Saudi economy, as they became the most important passageways for commercial and industrial exchange between the Kingdom and other regional and international countries. The ports were consequently developed and equipped with the latest equipment to receive giant ships and containers and keep up with the global developments in this regard. The system becomes complete with a unique distinction between the western and eastern coasts that hold between them another giant port that guarantees for the kingdom entrepreneurship in the direction of the east, which is the King Abdulaziz port in Daman, considered the second most important port in Saudi Arabia in terms of the location, size and specialization. It is also considered the main gate of entry for goods from all over the world to the eastern and central parts of the kingdom. This port was built to serve the oil industry and serve the cities in the eastern and central parts of the kingdom. The Saudi Ports Authority was able to attain self-sufficiency that reflects its interest in the humanitarian dimension, spiritually, mentally and physically through the administrative offices, marine, mechanical, electric and phone workshops, the marine telecommunications network and water desalination plants. On the other hand, it worked to provide a medical clinic fire stations and a huge housing complex for port employees, with a mosque and a market. The dream extends as far as the desert, so that the blue seas meet the red coastal sands, 
and the black asphalt between the valleys and hills extends, imported and carried over the seas from their ports aboard their fleets, transported through a vast network of highways linking the rest of the areas of the kingdom and the neighboring Arab Gulf countries, and onto a railway that tirelessly carries goods-laden carriages from the ports to the main Saudi cities, such as the line connecting the King Abdulaziz port in Dammam and the dry port in Riyadh. In spite of this, the Port Authority staff is ambitious to expand the scope of these lines to include the other ports in the kingdom. They are working to achieve this, with some construction and others being studied. It is the nature of things to change and transform. It is the way of the world. Thus, the authority understood the importance of keeping up with the times. In its wisdom, it created a comprehensive system of marine operations and port work, supported with the latest equipment, including towing boats capable of docking ships, however large, in complete safety. This is in addition to another system, which is an important station for containers in the region, which has earned international quality certificates in management and operation, in addition to the latest tools and marine parts that enable it to deal with all types of ships efficiently and effectively in record times, allowing them to enter and exit with high quality performance. Saudi ports have become famous for owning the most important stations for containers and goods that serve the area, included in a host of diverse services. There are stations for cold and general goods, and for bulk grains, as well as joint container stations and transshipment facilities for containers and all types of goods, including vehicles. This station supports a huge group of modern multi-purpose and duty cranes, including post-Panamex double-lifting cranes, mobile shipment cranes on steel rods, mobile goods cranes, forklifts, empty shipment cranes, and mobile carriers for containers and others on wheels, in addition to a number of towing heads. As a result of the studied development in the container stations of Saudi ports, high and noteworthy rates were attained at technical levels, enjoying the ability to handle approximately 13 million containers annually. These are subject, like other imports and exports, to accurate scanning processes through modern equipment in custom centers at the Saudi ports. They are also subject to accurate tracking through advanced systems from the time they leave the country of origin until they reach the importer. In addition to the immense capacities of the ports, special areas were created for re-exporting. These are responsible for collecting and re-exporting the goods, outfitted with the latest systems. They also enjoy various logistical duties, such as storing, collecting goods and repackaging them providing handling equipment and the required workforce, in addition to providing huge spaces for storing containers, vehicles and general goods to re-export them. The Ports Authority realized early on the importance of professional and environmental safety in the Saudi ports, and thus has instructed the relevant administration to undertake all their duties. They were therefore supplied with a comprehensive system of lifeboats, steering and docking boats, waste collection boats, firefighting boats, and boats for combating pollution, in addition to buoy docking ships and ship guiding boats. Additionally, maritime surveillance towers are outfitted with the latest communications and radar equipment to monitor ship movement.
The authority views its marine pieces as a live being, pulsing with veins that supply humanity with life. Any malfunction affecting it directly affects natural living beings. And therefore, it worked early on to avoid any problem that disrupts its live movement. It built repair basins for the ships that work to maintain them and repair their malfunctions, such as the King Abdulaziz Basin for building and repairing ships and the ship repairing basin in the Islamic port of Jeddah. This consists of floating basins along with a number of covered workshops and marine docks that are fully equipped to undertake all periodic maintenance work for ships at the hands of highly qualified trained professionals who have at their disposal the latest technological and technical equipment. The private sector spared no effort in contributing to the repair of ships. The Amzamil Basin at the King Abdulaziz port in Dammam has expansive capacities to build and repair about 12 ships simultaneously, all of which are specialized ships that are 80 meters long and 15 meters wide and weigh 1,500 tons. There is also ambition to expand the private sector in this regard. The surveillance towers in the Saudi ports are extremely important and compete with their peers in the global ports. These were equipped with very advanced and modern surveillance and tracking equipment to the extent that the maritime surveillance towers in the Saudi ports are considered amongst the most important and modern towers linked to a main control center in the port's authority in the capital, Riyadh. The ports track the ships from their moment of entry into regional waters through their tracking and subsequent departure as they pass through all operations and service processes through the VTS system. The port facilities in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia were not built as individual and separate projects. There was a conscious will to implement the principles of complementary planning in their construction. Our memory takes us back 40 years, specifically to the day the Royal Commission for Jebel and Yanbur was established in 1975. That was the start of the age of distinguished Saudi projects and marked the turning point in the Saudi history of construction. Merely thinking about building an industrial city was a stroke of the imagination. However, the industrial city in Jebel and Yanbur proves that the imagination has become a reality. And this challenge was a main element in the manufacturing strategy in the kingdom. A main component was building a port for the import of large, heavy and dangerous goods and constructing a base to export industrial goods. Thus came the decision to expand and develop the fishing port to become the Jebel commercial port as an integral part of the manufacturing strategy in the eastern region. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia occupies an advanced position among the countries of the world in its oil exports and petrochemical industries, as the Kingdom owns the second largest oil reserves and sixth largest gas reserves. It is also considered the largest exporter of crude oil in the world which constitutes approximately 90% of the exports. The kingdom is also ranked 19th amongst the largest economies in the world and was also classified as 13th country among the countries that export goods in the world. This increased the economic growth rates and necessitated a comprehensive system of industrial ports, which later became pioneering industrial cities of a high standing. Their duties are no longer restricted to imports and exports, they have rather become economic bases in which a group of industries and services were established. The King Farhad Industrial Port in Jebel is a model of excellence and achievement, winning many international awards and important certificates. Since its establishment, it has worked tirelessly at a competitive pace to offer services of importing raw materials required by local industries, in addition to exporting industrial products on which the national economy is based, such as petrochemical, refined petroleum products, chemical fertilizers and sulfur. Many types of goods are handled on the specialized docks of the companies that are signatories of long-term rental contracts.
The western and eastern coasts are connected and united by a single Saudi national identity to support the national industrial development journey. The King Fahed industrial port in Yambour is considered a main port for loading crude oil and refined products and petrochemicals to the Red Sea. 300 kilometers to the north is the Jeddah Islamic port, which is 25 kilometers long on this strategic coast. It is also in the middle of the sailing route between America and Europe and the east through the Suez Canal and Bab al Mandeb. This port is important to serve the industrial communities and fulfill their requirements. In addition to exporting crude oil, its refined derivatives and liquid and solid petrochemicals to the global markets. Through this port, the needs of the industrial complex are imported, including machines, equipment and plant components. The need persisted for additional ports to be added to the Port Authority, so that no coastal area would be left behind. Thus came the Ras al Khair port, the latest industrial port in the kingdom, to enhance the belief in the importance of coming closer to industrial areas. The Ras al Khair port is linked via railway to the mines and the city of Wad al Shamal in the northern region. It therefore opened new industrial horizons with varied production heralding a promising economic future for the homeland and citizens. The Ras al Khair manufacturing zone will supply the Saudi economy with veins feeding the pivotal programs and projects undertaken by the public and private sectors. The complementarity between East and West can be seen in the remaining commercial ports spread over the Western and Eastern coasts. The Yanbor Commercial Port. This comprehensive economic entity with a strategic location impacting the movement of goods. From the Northwest to the Southwest, there is the modern Jazan Port with its deep waters, equipment and highly skilled workforce, guaranteeing speed and efficiency in ship handling. The port is situated on the southwestern coast of the Red Sea, approximately 190 miles north of Bab al Maneb Straits. This makes it very close to the Aster and Western Maritime trade routes between Europe, the Far East, Arabian Gulf and East Africa. The city of Jazan is connected to the remaining areas of the kingdom via a modern network of roads, enabling it to serve the southeastern parts of the kingdom. In the northwestern part of the kingdom, at the tip of the northern coast of the Red Sea, lies the Daba port, which was established to serve the northern and western parts. As it is the closest transit line between the Arabian Gulf and the Arab Republic of Egypt, it provides a host of investment opportunities, specifically in passenger transport, as the port links two maritime routes, the Safaja port and Haghada on the Egyptian coast. It also handles general goods and containers. The services offered in Saudi ports, without exception, are characterized by their quality, as they're supported by shipping and unloading staff with significant expertise and professional efficiency. They are therefore qualified to offer services 24 hours a day, all days of the week, in all their operational and service facilities, either through direct operation or through operating investors from the private sector in the Saudi ports. The Port Authority realized from the very first day the importance of partnership between the public and private sectors in supporting the system of services and developing them, thus benefiting the homeland and citizens. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was a pioneer in privatized operation processes in the Saudi ports.
The privatisation project was inaugurated in the year 1418 Hijri, 1997 AD, and the first phase was concluded in 1421 Hijri, 2000 AD, recording in its history the first port privatisation process in the Middle East. All operation, maintenance and management of stations in all Saudi ports were referred to the private sector through leasing with income sharing through public competitions. The authority allowed all investment opportunities for the private sector, which had a positive impact on increasing the efficiency of operation and maintenance processes and on improving rates of exploiting station capacities. A quick statistical process will reveal that the volume of private investment in the Saudi ports totaled 12 billion riyals, thus making the total public and private investment in this vital sector 58 billion riyals. Saudi ports have consistently offered multiple job opportunities for Saudi nationals and migrant workers, either directly through cargo handling and maritime activities or indirectly, through motivating the growth of service sectors inside the kingdom. Today, this role is even more important, necessitating the pumping of more job opportunities in the labour market and opening the doors for commercial investment in the service facilities of the ports. This will, in turn, contribute to creating a new generation of Saudi experts and will ensure job security for a generation of Saudi youth, both male and female, starting with administrative jobs, up to all engineering, technical and operation works. With its vast expertise and unique experiences, the authority realised the importance of investing in people. And for this purpose, it established in the main ports training centres including halls, workshops, English language labs and ceremony halls. The centre offers 15 training programmes accredited by the Technical Education and Technical Training Institute in the maritime operational, security, safety and English language fields. The centres also offer their programmes for all members of the Saudi ports, as well as various relevant government sectors, such as border guards, civil defence, Saudi Royal Marine Forces, university students, the Meteorology and Environment Protection Authority and grain silos, as well as many other sectors, in addition to scholarship and training programmes at the specialised centres and universities internally and abroad. Today, the authority has proved its ability through the success that would not have been possible without God Almighty, followed by sound planning, supported by the dedicated national efforts, as well as the ongoing support of the government. The result depicted this success, where the movement of goods in the Saudi ports, excluding crude oil, represent 61% of all the shipments passing through the Arabian Gulf ports and arriving at the Saudi ports. A total of over 1,200 ships monthly, or one ship, every 30 minutes, each of which are subject to a unified set of rules and regulations that the Ports Authority unified in its regulations passed in 1400 Hijri, 1980 AD. These regulations are also regularly updated. It is also a source of pride that the Gulf Cooperation Council countries have adopted these regulations as a basis for their port regulations since 1405 Hijri, 1985 AD. Today, the Saudi ports are no longer merely locations for shipping and unloading goods. They have become comprehensive economic cities, hosting important strategic industries such as sugar refinement, food oil packaging, and the storage and packaging of rice and other grains. They are also marine platforms for constructing ships and the manufacture of various maritime spare parts. They are, moreover, supported by logistics areas, offering comprehensive services to fulfill the needs of investors and facilitate the work of beneficiaries of marine port services. 
These giant enterprises are run by national mines via a modern computer network, allowing beneficiaries to track their shipments through a high-quality electronic tracking system. The development of maritime transport led to the development of other relevant sectors, such as agriculture, commerce, industry, mining and others. The lives of the citizens and their means of living also progressed, all of which supports the interest of the country and its people. These are the rewards that we reap now and that our children will reap in the future.